All right, this video will be number two in the series of the rotating base assembly. Uh, last video we just created was for the bearing and the spacer and the base. This one is going to be for the top plate and the mid plate. And so again, starting at our homepage in our Schoology account, if you look towards the bottom on the homepage, you should see a folder that contains either assemblies or the folder straight up that just says rotating base assembly. Left click in that folder, and I want you to click and open the top plate and mid plate PDF file. Now again, this is too small for me, so I'm going to go ahead and download it. Open with Adobe Acrobat and say OK. And so this is the parts we're going to create today. We're going to start by walking through the top plate first. OK, so if you're looking at the top plate, we can start this basically with two, two steps. You can either revolve it if you wanted to. I actually going to go ahead, keep it simple, start on the top plane. Draw one big circle with a smaller inside and do an extrusion of 5.8. And then I'm going to flip over to the bottom, highlight that bottom face, make it two other circles here, and I'm going to cut down three millimeters. And then I'm going to come back and finish with a hole wizard, and then we're going to pattern that hole wizard. Okay, so getting that into practice, we're going to start with the metric part. So I'm going to go here to SOLIDWORKS, File New. Metric part, OK. Starting on the top plane, I'm going to start a new sketch. Turn on circle tool, draw two circles in the center, and dimension the outside circle. And I'm actually sorry, I'm going to turn this one off. OK, outside circle at 120 and the inside circle at 75. So going back in here, I'm going to make this at 120 and the inside circle at 75. Now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and extrude, cut, or excuse me, extrude this at 5.8 millimeters. So I'm going to go to Features, Extrude, 58 now, again, you can do mid-plane if you want. I'm just going to go ahead and do a straight-up blind 5.8 millimeters and check. Now, I'm going to come back in here, and I'm going to add my material of AISI 304 steel. So, I'm going to go here to the material not specified and right-click, edit material, AISI 304, apply, and close. Now, at this point, I'm going to rotate over the bottom. Highlight the bottom face and start a new sketch. Spacebar, normal two. Now, again, I'm going to draw two circles. One's going to be right on that edge, one's going to be a little bit bigger. Okay, so that means this inside one is going to be 75 again, and this outside one is going to be underneath uh, 92. Okay, that's where I'm seeing in the section cut. So I'm going to go ahead and dimension this to 92. I will then go to Features. I'm going to rotate so you can see this. And we're going to do an extruded cut. That cut is going to be at a depth of 3 millimeters. So where it says 5.8 here, I'm going to type in 3 and hit my check mark. So there is that bottom cut. So for an isometric point, I'm looking at this point right here. Now what I want to do from here is I'm going to go ahead and start by going to my features tool and we are going to put a hole wizard on here. Now looking at the hole that we have here, this is a countersink and I can tell by the V symbol right here in this note. That is countersink. So we're going to start with the countersink. There's six of them with a diameter far through all and a 9.4 by 90 degree on a 100, degrees, 100 millimeter circle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first actually start by creating a sketch on this top surface. Actually, no, not no, take that back. I'm going to go back and do the whole wizard first. So whole wizard and countersink. Okay, I want to go ANSI metric, flathead, and I know you don't know this, but in the final assembly you'll see this. This is going to be an M4 hole. 
Now I want you to make sure your custom sizing is showing. Now normally an M4 hole is a diameter of 4.5. In this case though, we're just going to change this to a diameter of 4. We're going to keep this number at 9.400 here, 90 degrees here, and we're going to make it through all. Now I'm going to go to my Positions tab, Spacebar and Normal 2. But before I can do, oh, actually I'm going to go ahead and put this on here. Hit Escape. But I need to draw under my sketch toolbar a circle. This circle will be for construction, and I will need to take a dim dimension of it of 100. <laughs> now, I'm going to take the center of this hole wizard. And with my control key, I'm going to attach it to that circle with a coincident. I'm also going to take this center and make it vertical. To that origin okay it's imperative that you put this circle on here this is really important otherwise your, your holes will not be in the right place to match up with your other with your base piece that we just created now with this done i'm just going to hit my green check mark okay now you're thinking okay i only have one of these i'm supposed to have six well now what we're going to do is go over here to our features toolbar i'm going to go ahead and get into an isometric view so you can see this better and under your features, there is a pattern tool, just like we had in our sketch toolbar. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead, drop this down, and I'm going, excuse me, pattern, and I'm going to do a circular pattern. However, when we do features, in order for the pattern to work, we have to look for not, only, not an origin, but a, uh, a temporary axis, okay, an axis of revolution. That's what this is asking for. So to do that, I'm going to come right up here to where the eye is and drop that arrow down. And I would like you to turn these two on here. Okay, these are axes and temporary axes. Go ahead and click out of there. Now I know it's hard to see, but here is that rotation point. So when I highlight this box and click that line, I want 360 equally spaced. I want six of these total. The features I want to pattern if you just click on this right here you'll see the other five will show up <laughs> hit your check mark and there are all of your screw holes okay i'm going to come back up now and turn those two axi things off and at this point i'm going to do a file save as we're going to call this to the desktop we're going to call this our let's see which one i'm doing the top plate Caps lock, underscore, your last name. Evaluate and mass properties, and I'm getting 259.58 grams. So again, you can either write that down or you can print this and take it back to your desk. As soon as you have, let's go ahead and start on the mid plate. So flipping back over to this view, I'm going to do the mid plate. So looking at this, I'm going to blow up a little bit bigger. I'm going to start this. This looks like the top. So I'm going to go ahead and start on a, just thinking how I want to approach this. I think what I will do is I will start with this lower base solid first and then another base on top. And then what I'll do is I'll come back and cut this in here along with these holes. Um, take that back. I think I'm going to start with this top circle first so I can make this with a hole here and these four holes included. So I'm going to start on my top plane with this first circle. So going back into SOLIDWORKS, I'm going to do a File New, Metric, and OK. I'm at the top plane, start a new sketch and draw a couple circles. Draw my smart dimension. Now I'm going to go ahead and dimension this circle here at 78 and the inside at 10. So I'm going to go here and make this 78 and this one at 10. Now I'm not done. I want to go ahead and add in four more circles here. So I'm actually going to go in this case, I'm going to draw one 
and then I'm going to pattern around four times. So this is going to be four circles. So we're going to dimension it diameter three. I need to create a 20 millimeter center line circle though to make sure that I'm in the right spot. So I'm going to start with is another circle for construction. And I'm going to dimension this circle to a diameter of 20. I'm going to make sure this circle is attached with a relationship of coincident. I'm also going to make sure that it is vertically aligned to my origin, again, using a relationship. I'm going to dimension this small circle to a diameter of three. Now, I've got that one in place. I'm going to go ahead and come back to my sketch patterns, and I'm going to do one more pattern of circular pattern. In this first box, I'm going to pick this origin as my pattern. I would like four of these, and the entity I want to pattern is this circle right here. I'm going to hit my check mark. Now, what I want to do is I want to extrude. So, what I've done is I've created these four circles. I've created that inside circle and this outside one. So, I want to go ahead and extrude this out uh, a total distance of 5.8 minus 2.3, which is 3.5. So I'm going to go ahead and do a features extrude boss base of 3.5 and hit my check mark. I'm going to add my material on here, which is going to be a chrome stainless steel. So right click and edit. Chrome stainless steel, apply and close. So that gives me basically this top piece here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the bottom of this now and create this large outside circle that I will then extrude 2.3. And then we'll come back and do the, uh, the uh, little recess cut right here. So we'll do two more steps. So I'm going to flip this over with a rotation on my middle mouse button. Hit the bottom of the face right there and do a sketch, space bar, and normal two. Draw a second circle. I'm going to dimension that circle to a diameter of 85. So I'm going to go here and make this diameter 85. I will then extrude this, but I want to make sure my extrusion is going away from this one here. Now, what I said was it's going to be 5.8. No, oh, actually, this one, excuse me, is 2.3. That was right there on the drawing and check. So this is what I'm looking at now. We're not done yet though. Oh, I did make a mistake here and I gotta go back to my sketch and hopefully some of me have pointed this out. What am I missing here? If you look in this hole, what did I forget? I forgot these holes here. So what I need to do is I have to come back in and add those in. And the fastest way to do this is just left click on the edge of the hole and do convert entities. Left click on each hole, convert entities, convert entities, convert entities. Oops, what am I doing? Sorry. And this, and hit your check mark here. So that all I did was highlight them and make those edges turn into sketches. So now when I come in here and check off, now those are out of the way. So spacebar isometric, here's what I'm looking at. Okay, so everything's going through, that's good. However, the thing I'm missing right now is this channel that's on the bottom face. So I need to add in that feature by rotating to the bottom, spacebar, or excuse me, click the bottom, start a sketch, spacebar normal two. Now I'm gonna draw two circles. One, and then one slightly bigger, two. Now I'm going to dimension those two circles. That's these two here, 55 and 69. Okay, so I'm going to go to the outside circle here. The inside circle here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut that up. And I got to look, and it looks like I'm going to be cutting that up a distance of three millimeters. So I'm going to go to my features, extruded cut. I'm going to put in here instead of 2.3, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 
three millimeters, check. And now I have that recess cut in there. So here's what I'm looking at from an isometric view. And now my part is complete. So now what I want to do is quickly do a file save as. We're going to call this uh, mid plate underscore your last name. Get our mass properties. I'm looking at 195.51 grams. So go ahead and write that down. You can also print this if you want. However, you're not going to be attaching it to the drawing. Okay, so I've got my two parts drawn. I've got my top plate and my mid plate done. So what I want to do is create this drawing so I can get this submitted and turned in. Again, we're using a GHSA metric. So I'm going to slide this drawing over so I can see it on my other screen. I'm going to start with a file new, GHSA metric, and OK. I am now going to go ahead and double click the top plate. I'm going to start with a front plane, preview on, hidden lines on, and scale should be naturally at 1 to 2. Starting in this lower left hand corner, I'm going to left click and then pull up. Uh, then I'm going to pull an isometric. You will notice that the uh, one extra view there, again, is not a right side view that goes between here. It is again a section. In addition, you see this metric box. I'm going to move and I'm going to highlight and get rid of that box there. I'm going to add color to this far right view. Dragging window, delete. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create the section view, which in this case is a vertical section. So under view layout, I'm going to go to section view, attach right to the center of this top view, check mark, and pull right to the middle. We're going to identify this as section B and check. Okay, so now I have almost all my views. You'll notice though, is in addition to this isometric, I have an additional isometric view. What this one is going to be is current model view. We've done this before, but I want to re rehash how to do this. These are views are important so that the builder knows there's a cut underneath. Gives them a better perspective. <coughs> Excuse me. So, going back into my SOLIDWORKS part, I'm going to use my up arrow, one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to come back into my drawing now. Just leave it alone. You don't have to save anything. Come back into your drawing. Model view, double click top plate, but instead of clicking any of these boxes here, I want you to just click the word current model view with color and bring that right out below this. Now you've got both views that you need there. So I'm going to actually move this up a little bit more for space, move this up a little bit more. All right, so at this point, these views are complete. So now what I want to do is in this upper section, bring in my mid plate. So again, model view, double click mid plate, front view, hidden lines on, scale at one to two. And starting with my front view, I'll put right above the top view of my top plate and my isometric. Now again, the other view you're seeing here that's in between is not a right side view, it is a section view. So what I'm gonna do in this case is I'm gonna to go to my section. Again, it's a vertical section. I'm gonna lock on a circle, check mark, and slide to my right. Name this letter A and check. I'm gonna go ahead and make some adjustments here. Pull this one down a little bit closer so I can move this one down. And move this so it's not on the edge of the border. Add color to this. And check. Now, if you want to make it that green color, going back into my mid plate, I didn't go back up here to the top. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Add that color. I'm going to go with a dark aqua green like this. I'm going to hit my check mark, hit file save. And now, if you go back to your drawing, this will be in that color. Now you'll notice again on this one, there is a secondary view. Same exactly as this one. 
we're going to go in, we're going to arrow tab or tab the arrow up five times, and we're going to bring in current model view. So going back to this, I am now going to go back to my mid or my mid plate. I'm going to do my up arrow one, two, three, four, five. Come back over to my drawing, model view. Double click your mid plate. And instead of any of these views, hit current model view with color one to two and bring this one out. So now I have all my views available for me to start dimensioning. The first thing I think I'm going to start with right away is I'm going to add in my two titles or my two notes. So I'm going to go control copy, <clears throat> bring this back over so you can see what I'm talking about. <clears throat> I'm going to come over here, highlight the top plate, control copy, go back into my drawing, add a note under the annotation toolbar, control V. Highlight top plate, make sure it's bold and underlined. Don't forget to change your value of X's with a real number. I'm going to go ahead and make a small adjustment, bring these down a little bit tighter. So I have a little bit more space for my mid, my uh, whatever mid plate above. Okay, I'm going to go up here and do the same thing. I'm going to come back into my drawing, <clears throat> highlight this note here, Control Copy, come back into my drawing, Note Tool, Control V, bold and underline the top, change your X's to an actual value. You know, slide this up a little bit higher, bump that a little bit closer, and now I have what I consider enough space between the two views. And so these are all done. So now what I'm going to do is come over here to my annotation model items, entire model, import into all views, and hit my check mark. Now, again, because of these circles, a lot of these dimensions are not in the same spot. So what I'm going to do is slide this back over. And I'm going to take and go ahead and start adding in the key dimensions. So looking right away at this, I'm going to take this dimension right here and make that a 5.8 by coming over 2.1. All right, the 92 can stay, but the 75 is deleted, the 120 is deleted, and this 75 is deleted. The 6 is deleted, and then I'm going to take this 3 and move it down below and move my section BB a little bit below. I'm now going to go ahead and add on additional dimensions here with the outside dimension here of 120. Inside dimension of this hole is going to be diameter 75 through all or through. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn on my whole callout tool at the top here and click on this circle right here. Now it's going to give me this note. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to slide this over a little bit further, take my section cut a little bit further to the right. Right now 6x six, six diameter 4 through all. Okay. Uh, what do you recall this? Uh, countersink is 9. Now I got to change it to 9.4. So I have to go over here to the left where it says countersink diameter 9 and changing the decimal to a 0.1. Okay, so I add 90 degrees. And then I'm going to come in here in this white box over here at the far left, get all the way to the end of that note and add on. On, enter, diameter, 100, space, CL symbol, circle, and then hit your check mark, and now your note is done. Dial these all in. Now, this whole area is finished. Okay, so now I'm going to work my way up to this upper view. Again, I'm going to add some dimensions on here. I'm going to start over here with an 85. I'm going to hit this inside line here as a 78. I'm going to go ahead and hit this inside hole here as a diameter 10 through all. Get rid of this 85. 
keep the 69. The 10 can go. The 20 can go. The 55 I'll keep. The 3 I'll get rid of. The 78 we get rid of. Uh, I'm going to get rid of this 2. Move the 69 over to this side here. Get rid of that 4. And then take this number 3 and bring it down. Move my section A a little bit lower. And now this view is complete. Now one thing I have to do for this one is I'm going to have to turn on my sketch tool. Come in here and draw a sketch from the center of that circle to the center of one of these, one of these other small circles. And make that circle for construction. That's how that circle is added in. I'm going to add a quick note to this circle right here. This is diameter 3. So in my white box to the left, 4 space X. I'm going to go to the behind the word dim space T-H-R-U-A-L-L, -L, enter, on, and then diameter symbol, 2, 0, space, C-L symbol, circle. Check mark. And adjust your dimensions so they fit correctly. I'm going to take this view and slide it over a little bit more, give me plenty of space for all my notes. I've got one more dimension to add into here. I got to add in this little one here. This will be a 2.3. So I got to come over and change that decimal to 0.1. From the top line to the bottom line, it says 6. I'm going to change that to a 0.1 of a 5.8. And with that said, this drawing is done, except for our page numbers. So now I gotta go over here to the title block. This will be page two of three. First initial last name. Title is gonna be top plate and mid plate. Today's date 020620. Period is whatever your class is currently in. And scale for this one will be a 1 to 2. Now, let's do a quick file save as. I'm going to do top plate, underscore, mid plate, underscore my last name, and hit save. And then what I want you to do is hit save all. Go ahead and print this piece of paper. You do not need to attach your mass properties to it. Take that paper and submit it into the collection box. And at this point, you're done with page two of the three pages for this assembly. The next video will cover how to do the assembly and explode view. Use this video to your advantage. Again, pause, rewind, whatever you have to do. But this drawing is due by the end of the period. Good luck.